Welcome to Digging History. We're your hosts, James McCormick and Corbett Perkins, just two veterans out digging our way into history and using our love for history as part of our therapy as we navigate life after the Army. This show is all about bringing together veterans, history, and the love of relic hunting to tell the story of those who served long ago. This show will tell the history of America and locate those precious artifacts and properly display and preserve them for the sake of history. We bring together technology including metal detectors, maps, and even drone technology needed to locate, film, and document these discoveries allowing all citizens to see and in some cases touch items that are in most cases older than the state of West Virginia. The veterans we work with on these projects will have an opportunity to also tell their own story and in the course of these expeditions find some therapeutic value of the experience and fellowship that these great adventures provide. Today our show will focus on the benefits of metal detecting and how we have learned that some of the greatest form of therapy comes from simply putting our hands in the dirt. Corbett, let's discuss some of our recent digs and our new Facebook page, <laughs> Veterans Digging History. What do you think? Well, I haven't been on the Veterans Digging History thing yet, but hopefully we can get other veterans to come out and dig around with us. Well, you know, social media is kind of a way that people just connect, and uh, we've brought it up here on the screen right now. And the whole purpose of this is, is to bring folks together. Veterans, history, the love of relic hunting. And it seems to me that, that most people use Facebook. Now, some of these uh, Facebook pages can be used in a bad way, and some of these yeah. things can be used in a good way. We've seen the bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we've also seen the good, and we take it all in stride. Um, when you think about getting on social media, we want you all to come onto our page and hit like and follow us. Because when you do that, we also want you to share your expeditions, what it is that you're doing. So maybe you're finding a, a, a way of uh, a therapy through metal detecting or, or maybe something else. You know, we also do a little bit of farming mm -hmm. and uh, agriculture work. I'm going to give it the beekeeping here before too much longer, hopefully. Yeah, I'm going to get back into beekeeping. So, Corbett, what is it do you think that, that you like the most about what we're doing with this show and what we're doing with digging history? Well, with the show, just like all the social media and whatever, with us bringing this to the other people or out to people, maybe it might spark a little bit. Because if you forget your history, mm -hmm. you forget where you come from and you're bound to repeat it. Mm -hmm. History will repeat itself. So if you forget everything, we're going we're gonna to repeat all that bad stuff in history. So maybe if we're out and about doing this stuff, bringing history back mm -hmm. and letting everybody see it and hold it, whatever, maybe it'll spark your interest in history and you won't forget. Yeah, it's kind of sad. Whatever things happened. So. You, you, know what, you know what? I just was, was thinking about something. It's kind of sad that, that there's some of our kids that they don't even know the history of not just our state but our country. Not just that. Do you know how many people doesn't don't even know about Scary Creek? I know. The very first battle, the very first Confederate land, land victory. Battle, land victory. Yep. They don't even know who uh, General Patton is, which General Patton's grandfather commanded that battle. Mm -hmm. And it was, if it wasn't for him, he was the one who was planned it because he was supposed to withdraw. Mm -hmm. I know we can go into a big history lesson later, but Patton was supposed to withdraw, but he stayed. And thanks to that, that was the Confederates' very first land victory. You know, we got a very good chance to also work with some uh, some famous diggers, too. You know, we got to work yeah. with KG diggers. and Ringy. KG and Ringy, man. <laughs> Straight up from uh, the used to be on the National Geographic mm -hmm. Channel. Diggers. And, and now they have what is Diggers TV, I think it's on YouTube. Diggers TV on YouTube. If you get a chance, go go look that up. It's Diggers TV on YouTube. And of course, we're all friends with both Tim and, uh, uh, and fact, George. I think they're in, were they not just in England? They were yeah. just over in Europe. Yeah. And uh, I'm excited to talk to them about, you know, getting involved in some mm -hmm. of these trips. So what I'm thinking about is is when we start to move this show forward outside of just the boundaries of West Virginia, mm -hmm. which is coming up real soon. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. But 
But wouldn't it be cool to take some veterans to a place like Normandy mm -hmm. or into uh, the bulge? The bulge and start to find items mm -hmm. that our soldiers and other soldiers carried yeah. and then be able to not only, you know, experience being there, yeah. but, but actually holding it. Yeah. Either one of the Germans or American or British, mm -hmm. Australian, Russian. Yeah, absolutely. One of those soldiers held that stuff. So, so history is cool, man. History doesn't just pertain to West Virginia. So, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, we need to. And here's us, two West Virginia hillbilly veterans. We're, we're going to head out. Weren't we, weren't we called uneducated at one point in time? I think so. I mean, I believe, I believe <laughs> yeah. Anyway. I think we were called uneducated one time. Yeah. Uh, smarter than the average bear. You know, we, we yeah, that's right. <laughs> what's really cool is, is that how we're taking technology, mm -hmm. all right? So you have a program where you map some of these, all of these finds that we talked about it on the last show, but why is it important? You know, I know the reason, but maybe our viewers don't understand. You know, it's not just about going out, taking the metal detector, finding a coin, finding something, digging it up, sticking it in your pocket. Yeah. You know, I it's how about much I can get out of this. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how much this is worth. I mean, the value is worth, I think, more historically than yeah. anything else. Because just like the square head nail, the nails from the last time I said, mm -hmm. that blacksmith had to take the time to pound that into that anvil and make that nail. So, you know, I think it also would help to to, to get the younger generation involved with history. Well, again. Not only that, get them off them playstations and the iPads. Get out and move. That's move, right. Uh, <laughs> move. Uh. Yeah, if you don't, if you don't, I'm telling you, you're not going to find any of this stuff sitting on a couch. Well, you can, I guess, through the PlayStation, through virtual reality. But what fun is that? I ain't no fun. No fun at all. So if you're going to do something, you know, you need to find a hobby that keeps you occupied. So us as veterans. Well, not only that, but you get the combat yellow jackets and <laughs> snakes and things. You get out and learn how to. I saw a snake the other day. <laughs> It's I'm good. I don't need no more. I'm fine with snakes. It's yellow jackets. that just need to go away. Leave me alone. I'm telling you what, Corbett. I was out the other day, <laughs> and I dug up a hibernating snake, you know, and, and I put it back. Yeah. You know. You'll have that. But if you're lucky. You, you, my luck, I would have dug into a hibernating hive of yellow jackets, <laughs> which has happened several times here lately this summer. So what's the coolest thing you found digging? Uh, the, the coolest thing, coolest thing, coolest thing. Well, it had to be that infield charge bullet. Mm -hmm. The the half, of the well, it's like a quarter of a button, but I mean, that's cool, but it'd been better if I could find the whole button. But yeah, it'd have to be that, because that's the, that when the infield, infield bullet. That infield bullet, supposedly it wasn't fired there, but no. it's one of those magic bullets that all of these gun grabbers keep hollering for, but uh, that's the largest bullet that I found. Mm -hmm. So, and that's well, that's the largest thing so far. Besides, I I don't know. There might be those big pieces. I won't have to, won't have to weigh them out yeah. here one day. I think I found pieces to the cannon, um, the carriage and stuff for the mm -hmm. cannon. I mean, that's, I found an old pot belly stove. Mm -hmm. That was, I mean, it was in sections, but it's still an old cast iron stove. Mm -hmm. I think it was from that old homestead out there. Yeah, and. Uh, I don't remember the date. I know where it's at. I, I set it out, but um, it was somewhere late 1700s, early 1800s. Mm -hmm. I found the whole the whole thing. Wow! So I mean, I think an I old found, Ben Franklin type stuff. Yeah, an old wood wood burning stuff, and you could cook on it. Um, I found um, the rings to the powder kegs. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The so rings I mean, that go around barrels and yeah. stuff. So I found I found about. I mean, but the bullet is what I like the best so far until I find a buckle or a cannonball. Well, and I found a few things like that. You I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> anyway, let's roll on. So I found this really <laughs> cool section of a U.S. belt buckle, which uh, it's actually, it's the round piece yeah. that goes in, the connection you found, piece. You found several cool things, but we don't need to talk about that right now. <laughs> so we have, a little bit of a, we, we have a little bit of a competition, but it's a friendly competition to where we go out and we try to find things, really cool stuff, 
and and we like to get it out in front of people. I want them to see it now. Yeah. I, I know that I don't usually wear a hat on here, so I'm going to talk about this hat. I'm going to talk about this trip coming up, and then we are going to take you uh, out to the field. You're going to actually get to see some of our digging that we've done uh, over the course of the month, and, uh, and, and hopefully you'll find something really cool that you like to watch. So, with that being said, notice the hat here. It says Bald Head Island. I don't know if you see that, and I hate my hair being like that, but uh, but Bald Head Island is an island off the coast of... I know, you're looking slick today. <laughs> <laughs> well, I used to be from Bald Head Island, but I decided to grow my hair up. <laughs> he told me I needed to grow whiskers yeah. on my face. <laughs> yeah. There's two things in life, James, that has... Well, it's not, like I told you, it's not totally true that doesn't have facial hair. That's mm -hmm. women and children. But I've seen women with beards. <laughs> so that's not totally true. <laughs> Bald Head Island. So we are working on an expedition to a place called Bald Head Island. Bald Head Island is off the coast of North Carolina. And why is it significant? <clears throat> Bald Head Island was the site of the first amphibious assault by the Continental Army in 1776. Wait a minute. Did you, you did say amphibious assault. Army, correct? Army. You got that, right? They're Marines. The United States Marine Corps. <laughs> okay. We always like to have a good time with that. <laughs> the, but the first amphibious assault. Now, why is that significant for West Virginians? Because some of the greatest fighters came from a place called West Augusta. Mm -hmm. And that's what George Washington said. And that's us, West Virginians. And there were surely, most definitely, West Virginians that were part of that amphibious assault. And we're going down there, and we're going to try to make the connection. We're going to try to find some artifacts. Who knows? We may find nothing. But in addition to that, it was a training site that was set up during the Second World War. And then there was a lot of Civil War history. I know the Confederates had a battery there. Uh, was there not... Um there's not pirate. There's a lot of pirate, pirate stuff, stuff there, there too. Yeah, yeah. If I'm not so mistaken. we yeah. might find some pirate treasure. Well, I don't know. Let's pray for it. Let's <laughs> not use it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. But anyways, folks. So uh, watch for that. That's coming up soon. These are going to be some of the adventures that Corbin and I are going to be involved in. And uh, but for the time being, I want you to in sit back and enjoy the show and some of our digging. Tell them roll it, Corbin. Rolling. All right, James McCormick here with Digging History, and we are in a ravine uh, on a private piece of property, and uh, it's in Kanawha County. So uh, we got permission to come up here, which is really cool. It is. Um, so far, we haven't found anything. We found a lot of, you know, just normal trash and things like that. But we're gonna keep looking. Um, Charleston, West Virginia was very significant in the Civil War. A lot of Civil War activity up through this area. Uh, thousands of troops, the city was burned, uh, you know, lots of gunfire, musketry, cannon fire, uh, a pretty significant amount of activity. And then there was a camp on down uh, the way at Fort Hill. We're gonna try to get in one section at the very end of Fort Hill where we've got a very small area that we can search that uh, we've got access to. Uh, if you're out there digging, make sure you fill your holes, make sure you pick up the trash. Even if it's not your trash, take it anyways. You know, uh, be a, you know, be a good uh, responsible digger. You notice I got my orange on. I, there's, it's a city here close. I doubt there's any hunters, but I want everybody to be able to see me. So just in case, safety first, drink water, know where your buddy is. Corbett is on the other side of the hill here and uh, he's got his two kids with him and uh, we, we just had some good times here so we'll just keep on searching till it's time to go. Take care. Okay folks I'm out here <clears throat> still searching and I got a pretty good signal. It's coming up 87 87, 88. So this is a public area. It's like way up in the in the woods. I have no idea. I found a lot of junk out here. I found a few Indian uh, head pennies and uh, some nickels and wheat pennies. Uh, but this is a good signal. So let's. I want to 
film this us digging this together so we've got it's very loose soil there as you can see oh wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute oh my god is that a silver dollar oh my no, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. Oh, boy. Oh, oh boy. A 1936 half dollar. Oh, my God. That is awesome. Now, I found a whole jar of these at one time. But I'm telling you, I get excited every time I find an old silver coin. Oh my gosh, folks. You know, I almost didn't come up here. Okay, folks. Uh, I know it's hard to see me here, and, and we're, we're on to something. I don't know what it is. Um, I'll be honest with you, I have to stop and set the tripod up. But this is a good signal. coming in at bouncing between nickel and dime it's it's just kind of all over the place but it's a good strong signal so I'm I'm gonna clean the area off here and I'm gonna try to dig this and see what we have and hopefully it's something good uh, I have no idea I have not dug it yet you can see this is all fresh dirt coming out of the ground here uh, it could be a button, it could be a bullet, it could be a shotgun shell, it could be a nothing. Okay, so it's down in here, so it's giving me a signal, so it's a little deeper, so that gives me some hope. Uh, but you just, you never can tell, you just, you just can't tell. Uh, when you're out here digging, you just got to dig, you know. Okay. Okay, it looks kind of white. Ah, it is a bullet. It is a bullet. It is a bullet. But is it a three? Yes, it is. It is a three ringer. Oh my gosh, yes. So it is a, it is a smashed three ringer bullet. Uh, most likely fired. All right, and you can tell that it's a three ringer if you look at it real close. Um, oh, sorry about that. I just try to get you all as close as you can get. It, I don't know if this is, most likely it's been shot, but it could have been hammered or, you know, played with it by soldiers. Who knows, they may have been trying to turn it into um, something. But this is right on the side of a hill, so it's very possible um, that it washed down or it was fired during one of the battles here. So, can't find it sitting on the couch. You got to get out and get the digging. This is the second one I found in this, in this area, so I'm going to really hunt this area good. So, uh, awesome find. So up on the hill there, you see uh, Corbett and his son, Brendan. But you know, there's no greater thing that you can do with your child than to spend some time with them, teaching them something, bonding with them. Not just fathers and sons, but fathers and daughters. That area that they're in right now, my daughter found a uh, Civil War Union button. And it was just the greatest little thing for her to find that. And I would love to see uh, Corbett and Brendan do the same thing and have that same wonderful experience because it teaches kids about history. So get together with your children, get a couple of metal detectors, and, and hit the woods. Okay, uh, well, you've got James McCormick and Cassandra McCormick down here with Digging History. And as you can see, Cassandra is equipped with her own little metal detector. And uh, very much like the metal detector she found a Civil War button with. 
So, what do you want to look for and find today? Uh, gold. You want? <laughs> you want to find gold? I'm going to try to find gold. Yeah. And what's your name? Cassandra Fair McCormick. I'm in third grade. You're in third grade. Where do you go to school at? Elementary. Yeah. And do you like metal detecting with Dad? Kinda. Kinda. <laughs> yeah, kinda. Well, let's get to digging, okay? Yeah, go ahead and start go ahead and start metal detecting. Let's go. You're gonna go to your secret spot, right? Make sure that your detector's down right, right? Ground balance it. Very good. Very good. No, it's just a junk probably here. Okay, there you go. And what does that metal detector show? So if there's junk, it shows it shows junk, right? No, it does not show that. Okay, now you swing it from the left to the right. Right. Junk is has a sad face. It's got a sad face. And if it ha if it's this in the middle, it shows. Mhm. Mm okay. Well, you want? How about this right here? Are you doing it like this right here? One. And then watch it. See all them little sad faces? But we're looking for the happy face, aren't we? Yeah, we're trying. All right. Keep looking. <laughs> this is a lot of fun and honestly folks this is this makes the metal detecting on sunday afternoon that much more enjoyable we're here to park um and she did find a civil war button in this very area and so that's pretty amazing and she's got a happy face now so we got to get to digging okay what do you think it is you got a happy face, I did have a happy face. oh there it is is that another happy face? Okay. Swing it left or right. Oh, there it is. Hmm, doesn't really know what it is yet, does it? Okay, well, we'll have to dig it. Okay, right here. Right okay, here. right there. No, get my shovel. It, this is your shovel right here. Here. Okay, I got it. There you go. There you go. Keep going at it. She's tough. Now she's got that shovel. Now pop it up. Atta girl. There you go. Now that's it right there. Now dig the hole. Remember how dad showed you? Go all the way around the hole. Atta girl. And how old are you now? Eight. Eight years old. So you've been metal detecting since you were six, right? Yeah. A lot of fun, isn't it? Okay, folks, we're going to keep you in suspense. We'll come back as soon as we dig this one up. What is it? What is it? Oh, yeah. It's a silver Boy Scouts of America ring, folks. It is old. Super old. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And I was a Boy Scout, too, so this is a... Uh, this is a great find right here. Wow. Hey folks, James McCormick and Corbett Perkins here with Digging History. And I got a really good hit, about a 71. It's just screaming. So I started to dig it off. I think I know what it is, but I wanted to get this dug. Now, it looks like, ah, yeah, check it out check it out it's an old spoon and and it doesn't look like much to some people but there's some writing on the handle of this spoon and i'll have to look at it later but that's really an old old spoon um at least turn of the century uh but still a really cool find a little piece of history digging history um we're over here in uh, actually we've traveled across the river we're in pomeroy ohio i uh, got permission to search here in this area and uh i found a civil war button in this area once before so you know maybe this was a spoon from that same era i'm not sure but i'll clean it up later and let you take a look at it when we do our reveals that's awesome So I'm out here digging again, same place, two feet away, and I pull out, that is a sheath, 
That is the end of a sheath for possibly a sword um, or a dagger. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? I mean, I have to clean it up and stuff, but that's exactly what that is. See how it's come to the point there? And that actually may be the end of the blade. But as I clean this up, I'll let you know. Um, and th this could... I'm not sure what era that is, but, but I'm pretty sure that's what that is. That is an awesome find. Wow, can't find it sitting on the couch, folks. Get out and get to digging. I am finding relics. <laughs> really cool relics today. Man, that is beautiful. Well, that was a great uh, bit of footage from the field. I hope you enjoyed it. And I want to thank you for watching Digging History and Honoring the Sacrifice. And I want to put out a special thank you to the West Virginia Library Commission for their support and access to books and historical articles that help us locate and bring history alive. Remember that some of the greatest adventures is just a short trip to your local library, and it's a tremendous resource that's free for us to use. This also gives us a chance to remind you of the great resources available at our West Virginia Archives and History Department in the West Virginia Cultural Center, and it includes a great gift shop that sells these wonderful items that I'm going to give Corbett's kids this yeah. nice popcorn yeah, nice that I bought balls. there, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping that they're going to enjoy that. But now that gift shop also has crafts and books that That's you right. can purchase. I've bought several books from here that helps with our research, just FYI. Yeah, absolutely. Some of the Civil War books in there mm -hmm. are awesome by local authors and uh, local craft makers. So it's going to be a great opportunity when you come here to visit it. Ghost stories, too. Yep, and absolutely. <laughs> and remember, get your kids involved by visiting your local family. library and, of course, watching the great shows uh, available on the library channel. We want to send out a special thank you to our veterans that helped us make this show possible. In addition, we wish to thank Fisher Research Lab for providing us technical and material support and also a special salute to our veterans that were involved in this show and for Beth Garrigal. Your service as our producer has been invaluable. And lastly, to the Library Television Network who brings this to you and allowed us the opportunity to take it on the road, we say thank you. Please be sure to watch for all future episodes of Digging History. Have an awesome day, folks, and remember that a day digging history beats a day on the couch. So get to digging. <laughs>